pollinating all of my fly traps. Oh, so much fun. This is how we make seeds so that we can make you new and exciting cultivars and also sell seeds to you. I sit here and hand pollinate all these flowers alongside Damon. We take turns all um, summer, spring and summer to make this happen. But it occurred to me that many of you probably don't get the chance to see flytrap flowers in bloom, especially in mass like this. And because of that, you don't really see all of the differences that these flowers can have. And they kind of seem like they would all look the same, especially when you see them from a distance, boring little white flowers. But the truth is there's a lot of variation in them and it's pretty cool. So I thought maybe we'd take a quick look and see what they look like, show you some of the variations that I see when I pollinate. But remember, we do encourage you to cut the blooms off unless you have a really, really big, vigorous plant that's growing in full sun. And that's really important. They need a lot of sunlight to sustain that bloom. So make sure it's in full sun, outdoors if possible, sitting in water and getting lots of bugs. Then you can totally encourage the blooming. Um, but really, uh, unless you're making seeds, it's not worth it. So I would recommend you go ahead and get that flower off unless you're desperate to see it. But why don't you just look at this video and then you can see all these lovely flowers and then cut the blooms off your plant to encourage the better growth. All right, let's take a look to see what kinds of different flowers I have. So here are some very typical Venus flytrap flowers. You can see I've got a few, right? So Venus flytrap flowers always come up on these long stems far above the traps below. And that's so that they reduce the chance of catching their pollinators. So here are the flowers. And they're pretty simple looking flowers, but they be, can be quite pretty when they're blooming and mass. And again, like so, very pretty. You'll notice that some of mine have already started to cycle and that's because we've been actually pollinating for a while. So you're gonna see some that have died back like this and they're gonna start to form seeds. And even as we're going through these plants, we're going to see some seeds forming like here. These right here are the seeds. Very exciting, I'm gonna harvest these soon. So that's your very typical flytrap flower. If that's the typical flytrap flower, what do the not typical flytrap flowers look like? Let's take a look. Here's a great example of a very unusual flower, and that is this little plant that we call Axel's Cup Track. And as you can see, the plants are actually quite small below, and it's on a much shorter stalk. The little plants themselves have much smaller flowers. Look how tiny those are compared to some of the bigger flowers. They have a very translucent petal, and they're like little star shapes, but they're really lovely, aren't they? Okay, so another fun thing, the red fly traps tend to have little red stigmas. You see that right in the center, the little center of the plant where you're gonna put the pollen if you were to pollinate. Red fly traps tend to have these. We also see these in a few of the other cultivars, but the red fly traps almost universally have that. So that's a fun little difference. They also have red stems. So this is something you see kind of rarely in uh, plants at home, but you see it more commonly in Venus flytraps and Cape sundews and other sundews. And you also see it when you grow as many plants as we do. And that is when the plants grow little plants instead of flowers. So this cool plant has done this. We always see this every year on at least one of our Venus flytraps. We could in theory cut that off and make it plant. We'd have to dip it into rooting hormone and keep it really humid if we wanted to do that. And then check out Sawtooth. So this flower is so interesting to me because it has this ragged edge. And if you look at the traps, look at those. Look at the edges on those, very interesting. Now, I wish I had some of my more mutated cultivars like Pac-Man or Wacky Traps blooming because those have really odd flowers, but they're already done blooming for the season. And anytime I see a trap that is shaped like Pac-Man or Wacky Traps, they always have the same kind of deformed flowers. Very, very interesting. And oftentimes the really, really deformed traps lead to very, very strangely, strangely built flowers, some of which can't even produce um, stigmas. So those kinds of things are always really interesting to see in the process. Now remember, we do encourage you to grow to grow fly traps and to cut the flowers off unless you're going to produce seed because they will have bigger traps if you do that. But it's always fun to see all the fly trap flowers. 